from sidekick to legend. These are the 10 Nightwing comics that you need to start with. Deep within a bleak and dismal swamp, hidden beneath its murky waters, lies the headquarters of the most sinister villains of all time. The Legion of Doom. Hey, how's it going, super friends? Jake here with the Brave and the Boys, and today we are making our Nightwing Where to Start With guide. So if you're brand new to comics or you've been reading comics for a long time, these are 10 Nightwing comics that you need to start with. Up first, there's no better book to start your Nightwing comics reading journey than Nightwing Year One. This book was out of print for a long time, but it was just reprinted in a deluxe edition. And later this year, there's going to be a box set which includes Robin Year One, Batgirl Year One, and this all together, which is awesome. But this was written by Chuck Dixon and Scott Beatty with art by Scott McDaniel. Now, Scott McDaniel wasn't my favorite artist in the world, but I liked his art in this much more than in a future Nightwing book or other books you might see later on. But I love that they finally reprinted this deluxe edition where you can get either this cover or the amazing cover by Dan Mora, who's one of my favorite artists of all time. But this book in four issues tells the story of Robin's transformation into Nightwing. I love that it was condensed, it was easy to read, and it had all the moments you wanted to see. So at the beginning of the book, he starts out as a Robin that gets fired by Batman, and he has to go on a journey of self-discovery. And I think that's one of the things that's so amazing is... Being Robin might be a lot of fun, but it also it's a lot of pressure and you're constantly in Batman's shadow, you know, and especially with the relationship that Batman's his father, but also his, you know, boss or whatever. It's a weird dynamic. And the fact that he gets fired really was a shock to Robin, but he had a lot of things he had to work out. So along the way of this story, he goes to visit Haley Circus. He goes to visit Superman and he kind of discovers who he wants to be as a hero. That's not just a sidekick to Batman. Along the way, he gets tested along with a new Robin replacement and Batgirl in a gauntlet by Batman to see what it means to be a hero, and it's an excellent story. I also want to give a huge shout out to Robin Year One, also by Chuck Dixon, and I love that story. However, that book is not currently in print. As I said, it will be getting reprinted later on this year in that box set, but you can do what I did and read it on DC Universe. And if you want to see how to read digital comics, you can watch that video here. Robin Year One was also, like I said, written by Chuck Dixon, and it's going to tell the story of Dick Grayson in his first kind of early stories as Robin. So in Robin Year One, Robin is kind of carefree. He doesn't take the job very seriously and he gets injured. In this book, he's going to battle multiple villains by Batman, and he's even going to go off on his own and kind of no longer be Robin. And along the way, he learns what it means to be a sidekick and to be a hero, and it's an excellent story. But again, I don't own it physically, but I will later this year when that box set comes out. Let's move on to the next one. Next up, we have a Dick Grayson book, but not a Nightwing book. In this book, you have Dick Grayson, owning the mantle of Batman, and it is a dark psychological thriller as Dick uncovers gruesome crimes throughout Gotham City. This was written by superstar writer Scott Snyder with art by the incredible jock and incredible Francis Francavella, and it is mind-blowing. There's mystery and intrigue, amazing art. Both artists just kill this book, and it looks phenomenal. And the mystery slowly unravels as you try to find out who is this secret society, who is this serial killer, and who it is will shock you. Someone who has a deep personal connection to the character of Dick Grayson. And you have awesome moments with incredible villains in this book, and it just shows that whether Dick is Nightwing, Robin, or Batman, he is a hero, and you have to check it out. So this absolute has been out of print in a long while, but that's okay. There's a trade paperback and a deluxe edition, and as always, you can read it on DC Infinite. You got to check it out. Let's move on to a Nightwing story. Coming up next, we have the new 52 run of Nightwing written by Kyle Higgins with art by Eddie Barrows and Brett Booth. Now, I don't have the Omnibus because it was out of print since I've been a collector, but amazing news, the Omnibus Nightwing, the Prince of Gotham is being reprinted in 2025, so we are very excited. This is an incredible run that redefined the character. Now, I will say that Nightwing in this run has a little more a bit of a chip on his shoulder. He seems a little more... New 52. So for you new comic book fans out there, they did a complete company-wide reboot 
in the new 52. Nightwing came back with an attitude and a red costume, and he is in Gotham City fighting crime. In the first arc, which was called Traps and Trapeze, you have a mystery with Nightwing's origin in Haley's circus that he has to uncover. He battles this cool assassin. He inherits the circus that his family worked for, and there is maybe some ties to the Court of Owls. What I will say about reading this run is it really benefits you or behooves you to read the Batman run by Scott Snyder because they were so intertwined. The first couple arcs of this book really tie in heavily to that Batman one. So in the second one, you have the Court of Owls attack. In the third one, you have Death of the Family. And honestly, I think Nightwing as a character works better when he's in Bloodhaven. And in this one, he's really big of a, he's a big globetrotter. So he travels all around. He's not just in Gotham City, but I love my Nightwing in Bloodhaven. So while this isn't my favorite run, it definitely is great for new readers because it was just a complete reboot and you got to check it out. Let's move on to the next one. Coming up next, we have The Grace and Omnibus written by Tim Seeley and Tom King with art by Mikhail Yannon. And this book completely threw me for a loop. It was not what I was expecting. So after some events where Dick Grayson's secret identity gets exposed and he is presumed dead, he secretly becomes a agent of Spiral undercover for Batman. And this book was just a spy thriller to the max. In this, you get to see him fight familiar characters and new villains with fresh faces. And they are just super, it's always like double crosses and twists and you get to see him like have a nemesis in Midnighter, which was awesome because I just recently reread The Authority. But if you don't know The Authority, that's okay. You could still enjoy this. Midnighter is almost like a parody of Batman. So you get to see him fighting a parody of Batman. Along the way, there's awesome arcs such as the one where they have to recover these organs that give people superpowers. They all have crazy technology. Like they have these hypno things. So if you look at their face, it's blurry and you can't see it. So it's just crazy tech, crazy stories. And you get the writing of two amazing writers. So one issue would be written by Tim Seeley, then the next would be written by Tom King. And I think if you know their writing pretty well, you can tell who wrote each issue. But if you're new to comics, you can just read it as one fluid story. And it gives off like a modern interpretation of one of those old school spy TV shows. It's a self-contained story and it makes Dick realize why Nightwing's important, why he wants to be a hero as he kind of has to build himself back up and, you know, be undercover, but still be the hero that he needs to be. It's excellent. You got to check it out. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this next book is really exciting and I highly recommend it. It is the new Teen Titans by Marv Wolfman and George Perez, and it is excellent. The reason why I think this is awesome for new readers is because you get to start the story out with Robin, but as the volumes go down in one of the future omnibuses, he does become Nightwing. But what I love about this is you have Robin leading the new Teen Titans, and everyone else has superpowers, but why was why was Robin the leader? It's because he knows how to lead, and he knows how to work a team, and you get to see him develop leadership, and you get to see the Titans go from being a team of strangers or loose friends to becoming a family. There's awesome arcs such as battles with Slade, as well as Slade's extended family, and you get to see an excellent, you know, demon-rific, horrible arc with Trigon the Terrible, and there are later volumes such as the Judas Contract and where he is Nightwing himself. I haven't read those yet because sadly they they are out of print, but I did read this one and the rest I'm going to read on DC Infinite. Now, I will say this might not be for people who only love modern comics because there is a lot of old school narration in this. In fact, I think New Teen Titans might have been technically pre-crisis, but then it was also post-crisis. So there is a lot of old schoolness to it, but there's also amazing dynamics of the team and you get to see them like they seem like real characters. And this was definitely DC's answer or battle back against the X-Men. So I think this is a phenomenal story and I've heard it just gets better as the Omnis go on. So I can't wait to read the rest of it. Next up is Batman and Robin, Batman Reborn, which yes, I promise is a book that features Dick Grayson. So after the apparent death of Bruce Wayne, Nightwing has to return to Gotham and step up, taking the mantle of the bat. This time his Robin being Damian Wayne, the biological son you know, this crazy edgy assassin. And this book is phenomenal. I love the juxtaposition of the regular Robin and Batman vibe and dichotomy, where instead of a gruff Batman and a, you know, wisecracking Robin, you have a serious Robin that's, you know, just a bloodthirsty assassin. And you have a Batman that quips and makes jokes because, you know, 
Nightwing sh or Nightwing in the mantle of Batman should be lighter than Batman because Batman did everything he could to make sure that Dick Grayson wouldn't become him. So that's why I think Nightwing is the better character. And in this, you have a Nightwing struggling to be the Batman that he needs to be, struggling to be the mentor to Damien, and they battle awesome villains. There's this crazy serial killer, Professor Pig, who's as wild as he sounds. It is written by the amazing Grant Morrison with art by Frank Quietly and Philip Tan. And it is just a book that I absolutely love. Now there is a absolute edition of this, but it is out of print. However, they did just print Batman and Son, which takes place before this. So maybe they'll reprint this, but it's also available in volume two of the Grant Morrison Omnibus or as always on DC Ultra. So this is a phenomenal story if you want to see Dick and Robin together as Batman and Robin, but not in the Nightwing persona. So it's an excellent story with beautiful art. This is Nightwing Rebirth, which was the first Nightwing comics I ever read. And I will say this, it is great for new readers, but I also think that it is also good to read after Grayson because a lot of those characters make little appearances or cameos. I mean, I read it without reading Grayson and it was awesome, but now that I've read Grayson and I reread this, I think it's even better. So Nightwing Rebirth was written by Tim Seeley with art by Javier Fernandez. And like I said, this was my first Nightwing comic that I read week to week. So I have this in the single issues. I have the trade paperbacks and we got an announcement for the Omni. So you know I'm going to pick that up. So this book starts with Better Than Batman as the first arc, which shows Dick readjusting from being Agent 37 to being Nightwing. He returns to his OG colors of black and blue, and it is just everything that you want a Nightwing book to be. In the beginning, he works in Gotham City as an undercover agent in the Court of Owls, and he's partnered up with this dope villain kind of anti-hero named Raptor. Raptor is sort of like a Batman parallel again. And he, you know, he wants to teach Dick Grayson everything that Batman taught him was wrong and teach him the real way to be a hero and an anti-hero. And there's cool moments, cool fight scenes. You get awesome moments between him and his relationship with Barbara Gordon. And it just has all the Nightwing goodness that you, that you know and love. But then it gets even better because he does go to Bloodhaven. So after the new Superman comes back and tells him, hey, in my world, you know, you were in Bloodhaven, you were a hero in your own white. He takes Superman's advice and he goes to Bloodhaven. And that's when the book really gets cooking. I will say, though, up to a certain point after the Rebirth era, the book starts to taper off and then it becomes borderline unreadable. Never read anything with Rick Grayson. But luckily, we got some amazing runs after this. But Nightwing Rebirth, a great place to start as long as you stop before Rick Grayson. Coming in at number two, we have what many would consider the best Nightwing run of all time. That is Nightwing, written by Chuck Dixon with art by Scott McDaniel. Now, should this have been an Omni? Yes, but it's a compendium. And you know what? Compendiums are a phenomenal value. And I was happy to finally get these stories collected because a lot of them had been out of print for a long time. The book starts with a arc by Dennis O'Neill. And that's when you get classic old school Nightwing with a ponytail. It's a little too much for me, but you know what? You gotta love the 90s. And then it transitions into the Chuck Dixon storyline, which is there's these 21 mysterious dead bodies sort of linked to the Black Mask. And... Batman tells Nightwing, you got to go to Bloodhaven and investigate it. And this is a Nightwing that's a little rocked because he wasn't chosen to be Batman's replacement after Nightfall. He kind of feels a little insecure about his relationship to Batman, and he's got a need to prove himself. But he finds his home in Bloodhaven, and it's just everything you want a Nightwing book to be. I will say my critique is... I'm not a 90s comic reader, so Scott McDaniel's art, especially with older colors, is just a lot for me. It was almost verging on too much sometimes, but if you're into that 90s art style, you probably know it and love it. There are, and the, the city of Bloodhaven is just so much more corrupt than Gotham. They often say that, hey, all we need is a little bit of evidence in Gotham and Jim Gordon will help us out. But here the mayor's corrupt, you have corrupt police officers, and there's really no one for Nightwing to turn to. And it, it really sets up like there's individual stories that tell their own story, such as one where he's doused in scarecrow toxin and he has this horrible fear of this horribly mediocre life where he's married and he has kids and like he got passed up on a promotion because, you know, he's still dealing with the, you know, bat Azrael stuff. And then there's awesome overarching stories such as who is this mysterious kingpin in Bloodhaven? 
And there's such fun moments like when Nightwing realizes, hey, I actually have some money. So he gets to build his secret lair in his Batmobile. But it'd obviously be different because Nightwing's a very different character. I loved the parts where he teams up with Robin. And I love the storyline where he teams up with the Huntress. Lastly, there was a story that I loved where he has to go undercover into this woman who's maybe mysteriously killing her husbands for money. And you get to see him totally play up the rich billionaire playboy, you know, that Dick Grayson pretends to be. And it's awesome. There is going to be a compendium number two coming out in 2025. Again, if there's an Omni, will I buy it? Yes. But this compendium is an amazing value. And if you're looking to start comics, there's almost no better book to start with. Now, before we go into my favorite Nightwing run for new readers and just not my favorite Nightwing run in all time, I want to go through three honorable mentions. The first is a book that I've talked about ad nauseum on this channel. That is Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale's masterful sequel to The Long Halloween, Dark Victory. In this Dark Victory storyline, you have Batman battling the Hangman Killer. But along the way, you get the origin of Robin. And it has my favorite panel on all of comics where... Robin's parents were just killed at the circus and you see Batman or Bruce Wayne looking at him from the stands knowing the pain he's going through. Other than that, in the Batman and Robin's Adventure Omnibus, which is excellent, there is a short arc called Nightwing Rising, which you can also buy as a standalone trade paperback. I think it's as cheap as 10 bucks, but again, you can read it digitally. Batman Adventures and Batman and Robin Adventures are going to be the comic book adaptations of Batman the Animated Series, a series that kind of fundamentally changed me as a person and made me the Batman fan that I am today. And I love that they give you a short condensed arc of how Robin became Nightwing. Basically, he realizes, you know what, I don't want to be Robin anymore. They get into a big fight. And Robin or Dick Grayson leaves for a year or a couple years. And along this journey of self-discovery, he decides to become Nightwing and he comes back a hero and he gets, you know, it's, it's just all done in that excellent animation style of the animated series. And lastly is a book I don't own physically. It was recommended by a friend of the channel, Gianni. And he kept saying, you got to include this in your video. You got to include this video. So finally I said, you know what? I'm going to read it digitally because it's not in print, but it is Outsiders by Judd Winnick. This book is phenomenal. I haven't read all of it, but what I've read so far is amazing. It tells the story of an android from the future coming back into the past and meeting the Young Justice and the Titans team, and it just wipes the floor with them, and they have to fight it, and then it reactivates a robotic Superman that fights and fatally kills two members of the teams, fundamentally shattering their hope and their optimism, and Nightwing says, you know what, I'm done, the Titans are no more, the Young Justice team is no more, and he's just really depressed. But Arsenal decides, you know what, maybe we don't need a team that's as close as a family. Maybe we need to form a team of outsiders that can do the jobs no one else will do and help the people no one else will help. And you get to see Nightwing lead another team. It's got awesome characters such as Thunder. And they even have that crazy cyborg join the team. So I'm excited to keep reading. But since it's not collected anything, you want to read that one on DC Infinite. Now let's go to my number one Nightwing book. And coming in at number one, my favorite Nightwing run of all time for new readers or readers who have been reading forever alike is Nightwing by Tom Taylor with art masterfully done by Bruno Redondo. And I can't speak more highly of this book. I loved it. So after dealing with that period of time of Rick Grayson, honestly, I'll even say it, the Rick Grayson period was worth it because we got this run, my favorite run on my favorite character. So here you have Nightwing who has now regained his memories, realized he's Dick Grayson and not Rick Grayson. And he moves back to Bloodhaven with a new inheritance because someone very close to him has passed away, but I won't spoil that for you. And he decides, you know what? I want to do something different. I don't want to just be a vigilante. I want to fundamentally change the city from the ground up. And I want to be a hero in every way possible. And it is just excellent. The art does interesting things like such as there's one where you could put all the pages together and it's all one giant page spread. There's one issue where it's all from Nightwing's POV and he adopts a three legged dog. Then you got to vote on the name of the dog. We went with Haley because of Haley Circus, but AKA Bitewing. 
And you get to see him back in his relationship with Barbara Gordon, who, you know what I'll say, it, hot take, I think Barbara Gordon is the better romance for Dick and who I hope he ends up with. So it's a, an excellent story. It's still going on, but they announced an omnibus. And I think this might be the fastest turnaround time we've ever had for a omnibus announcement. So I cannot wait for that omnibus, even though I have all the standard size hardcovers. I'm going to keep both, you know. But it also spun out into Tom Taylor's Titan run. So I'm going to throw that on there as a little bonus extra reading. It's awesome. It's If you if New Teen Titans isn't your jam or because it's too old, or if it was your jam because you love the characters, now you get to see them in this dawn of DC world where the Justice League is gone and you have the Titans having to step up and be the hero. And it is just a awesome story with great characterization and I just need all the Tom Taylor books in my life. So you definitely have to read this run. It is filled with hope and optimism and everything you want a Nightwing comic to be. So thank you so much. Let's jump into my final thoughts. And that's all the time we have today. It was so much fun talking about my favorite superhero in all of comics. If you like the video, consider leaving a like or a comment down below who your favorite superhero is. Smash that like button, ring that bell for notifications. And I want to give a shout out to our Discord and Patreon, which are both linked down below, as well as a shout out to Organic Price Books. There, if you're buying three or more books, you can save $2 with the code BRAVEBOYS. Or if you're buying four or more, you can save... 5% with the code BRAVEBOYSIT. Keep reading and stay brave.